What up, Moto friends? Flip Moto here, sitting out here in the uh, green belt of uh, Austin, about to do a one year review of my beloved Street Cup, Triumph Bonneville Street Cup 2017. Uh, the first review of this, I've done a little dirty, and I'm going to be a little nicer to it this time. Two thousand seventeen Bonneville Street Cup. Uh, what I'm going to do here is give you just sort of a, a a refresher on why this model even exists, why it's a little more special than some of the other Bonnevilles out there, although not the most special, and kind of where it fits in the lineup and uh, why I like it so much. And I give you a little bit of a ride, uh, my thoughts on the ride on a on a nice twisty road. I'm going to give you a sound check. And let's go over just a few of the details of this specific model that uh, I've done to it over the one year. Uh, when it did, when I did purchase it, it had a new Rage tail tidy and brake light already installed. Uh, if you ever do get one, it didn't do the license plate very well, so I moved it down here to a vertical like a Cafe Racer style. Uh, I put a nice billet here because I didn't like the way the key worked and the whole fussiness of the Bonneville um, gas cap. Uh, this I found at a store. Uh, I fell in love with it. Ended up being the wrong size for the original handlebars and instead of just returning it I decided to order new Lhasa engineering handlebars, these Clubman style, that fit this perfect and I bought this to complete the blackout look so and the Evotech levers so that it ended up just all black. Uh, there is one more option you can do on these Triumphs. Anything with a dual clock like this, which is uh, special for the 900cc, we'll talk about that a little bit later, uh, they do have a black kit so that you can do these clocks as uh, black. And honestly, I, I kind of like the idea of doing that. But we're not sure if we're going to keep this thing. Not all Triumphs have the same wheel sets. Uh, these are the cast mag. Uh, and one other custom bit I did do, the blackout bolt kit, which is really cheap and significantly changes the look as, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, it, I think it feels much more in place instead of the big bright bolt patterns. And these are two bolts I would uh, wouldn't mind, actually, well, there's four, two on the other side. And there is also black versions of these as well. And then some people choose to wrap the pipes. Uh, I did not. I kind of liked the gold. It kind of matched the street cup, you know, in this painted stripe here. Uh, previous owner did just swap out the blinkers, and I believe these are uh, bare metal on the original, and these are the black. Uh, headlight is original. Could use an LED, not the brightest headlight ever. Yeah, so I mean, you know, I love the thing. It's a great bike, love it. Uh, why does it exist? Well, let's, uh, let's get on it, do a sound check real quick, and then um, I'll tell you a little bit about the Bonneville lineup and why the Street Cup exists here. So these are stock pipes, and I gotta tell you, it's probably the loudest stock Bonneville I've ever heard. I've heard louder Bonnevilles, but uh, yeah, it's juicy. Real juicy. So yeah, I love this thing, man. Uh, it gets a nice, hearty clunk into first gear, and uh, that engine's so juicy. It is Part of the reason I do want to get rid of it, though, it's a little louder than my tastes. Oh man, do I love this thing. Just hits all the right points that a motorcycle should. So how did the Street Cup come about? And why was it so short-lived in the Bonneville lineup? Uh, I don't know if you're coming and you already know your Bonneville history or not. 
Uh, I'll just do it as quick as I can. I only got about six minute road here through the uh, Kirby Hill country here. Um, in 2002, Triumph reintroduced the Bonneville lineup as a modern classic. And at the time, it was 765 cc's 785 cc's and i think within the first year or two they bumped up the cc's to 865 which is currently at now and they called it a 900. Uh, not much happened with the bike they did coin the term modern classic at the time so kudos to marketing team uh, they didn't make too many changes until 2008 they added fuel injection, which is a big thing. Uh, they did keep the carburetor look and the carburetor cover, but it was now fuel injected. And from 2008 to, let's call it 2011, there's a few bottles. Uh, they did come out with, they had the Scrambler 900. I don't, I don't know what the official term was that they used back then. I'll flash it on screen. They had the Thruxton. 900 uh, that went through several different colorways uh, then in 2012 they launched the Steve McQueen edition which is uh, absolutely wonderful specimen if you ever get to see one in person uh, take a picture and send it to me I'd love to see one in person never seen one in the wild um, they also had the SE model and that's kind of was the beginning of this version. Uh, the SE model had mag wheels. I don't even pe think people called it the SE back then or special edition. It was just the mag wheel lighter weight version of the same uh, Bonneville that everybody was doing. So really the changes between the different models was nothing but sort of accessories and things like that. Then big year, 2016. Triumph redesigned, almost from the ground up, the 1200cc version of the bike and launched four models, technically two, just two different colorways. Uh, the Thruxton, the Thruxton R, the Bonneville regular, you know, and then the Black Edition. They also tweaked the 900, and here's what really happened in that nobody really paid attention but they turned the SE model into the street twin in 2016 got a really nice colorway it had a single dash it was kind of modernized and it lost a significant amount of weight and that was a pretty big deal because it upped a little bit in power and there's some controversial opinions out there that they might have uh quirked up the 900 uh, because they didn't want it too close to horsepower to the 1200 version. And the 1200 version has had two different cams, uh, high torque and high output, I believe, H-O-H-T. Uh, can't quite tell you which models go with which versions and maybe that was just a blip. But this 2016 was a big deal and was the precursor to the 2017 Street Cup. Because in 2017, they launched all of the 1200 versions. So they launched a lot more versions of the 900. And it was the Street Twin, the Street Scrambler, the Street Cup, and the regular. So that had four, plus you had the eight. And I believe they even added one more version maybe to the 1200 cc uh i don't remember that 2018 about the same lineup different colorways pretty typical triumph they just changed the colors up a little bit and then 2019 street cup was gone gone it was only existed for two years uh, it's shorter time than even the 900 thruxton lived and when i was when it first launched, I just was like, wow, that thing's awesome because it's so much lighter than the Thruxton, so much cheaper than the Thruxton. There was a point 
in the model lineup where you couldn't even get a regular Thruxton. I believe it might have been 18 they dropped the regular Thruxton and you had to get the our only version. So that made the Street Cup basically the baby cafe that you know you could get at 10.5, I believe showroom was back then. Uh, I believe the new ones, this new Speed Twin 900, the new name, still the same engine, still the same bike, is uh, in that 10 and a half range. Uh, but they did launch the new 400, but that's not what this video is about. We'll talk about that later. We're going to focus on just this 2017 Street Cup, but it basically only lived for two years. So I put about 3,000 miles on it, maybe, maybe a little bit more. And I daily this to work. It's a very short trip to work, so I don't put a whole lot of miles on it. And uh, my biggest gripe, it's too loud, way too loud. Uh, sometimes when you're caught in traffic in the city and you're going stoplight to stoplight and you're stop sign to stop sign, there's almost no way to not make a lot of noise and you're not getting anywhere. And any of when you're hauling ass on this thing, uh, you're just making a lot of noise to not go very fast and it's kind of frustrating and I know that's very personal and it may be different for you but I don't know I just it feels weird to make a bunch of noise and not really get anywhere it just it's very Harley-esque in that sense and maybe I should have known that going into this bike maybe this is something that somebody wants uh maybe you're not going to daily this uh and when, when I mean daily I didn't every single day I didn't ride it in the rain ever um it can get annoying and it's the type of bass that uh, does you hear through your earplugs and uh, yeah that's so that's why I'm kind of uh, selling this uh, yeah and I love it I don't want to really I think I love the look of it I love the function I love the lack of maintenance uh, everything's perfect look and feel everything's solid Maybe I get a quieter exhaust, but I was thinking, actually, my next bike's going to be electric. I'm going to see what it's like to make no noise. And I'm kind of excited about that. Uh, a lot of people, maybe not. I don't know where you land on the EV controversy and whether bikes should be EV or not. Uh, you know, leave a comment down below what you think of all this noise making machines and uh, the EV. And if you're interested in the Street Cup, uh, you know, Give me a shout. Uh, thanks for watching. I'm going to leave you with that obnoxious uh, exhaust for the tail end of this video. Uh, it does sound good. And don't get me wrong. I really, really like the sound. It's just, it's perfect for hill country and not good for the city.